Welcome back to the Escape Pod. Thank you for escaping with us. That's Alex. I'm Andrew. And as always, with great power comes great. Happy, Happy New, New Year! Year. Ability. Ability. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we hope you enjoyed your 2023. Uh, we are glad to help welcome you into 2024. With open arms. What did you think of 2023? I thought it was friggin' fantastic. I, you, I mean, the escape pod came into existence. There's no better year. I was going to say, it's one of the most important years of my life, if not the most important year of my life. Yeah. Pretty no, I, 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 I've already had this conversation. I think it might be the best year of my life. Wow. Yeah. Certainly not monetarily. No, I took a big hit. <laughs> almost <laughs> Annual income almost cut in half, actually. Yeesh. Yeah. But it is what it is. Yes. Uh, so we are going to next week. We're going to officially rank all of the movies from 2023. We're going to do a full-on recap, but we didn't want to spend the first day of 2024 just talking about 2023. So we wanted to maybe discuss some things like that we would regularly do on the podcast. We've got a bracket coming. We've got got a great bracket. For uh, uh, all of the best post and mid credit scenes of yep. any superhero movie ever. Yep. Super excited to do that. I know we're going to be fighting. Up. I've got some passionate takes. I on don't rem- like after I, and mid credits. I have, it's impossible to, well, it's not impossible to remember all of them. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot on here. I'm like, what is that? And then yeah. I'm like, Oh yeah. yeah. It'll yeah. Be like, Oh, that was great. And yeah, that, that led that to that. Or that didn't lead to anything. Right? Yeah. I only have like a couple in my mind that are like, they better do well in the bracket. Yeah. No, I've got I've got quite a few that I'm I'm rooting for. You just touched me with your toes. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. They're barefoot and gross and cold. It is very cold out, and we always talk. You seem to think that I have toes of steel. Of steel, yeah. Maybe if we made a toes of steel movie, it'd be better. It would certainly be better than Man of Steel. There's no question about that. Uh, Favorite thing in 2023? Go. We just said we weren't talking about 2023. I wanted. I was going to do. I was going to do one thing. I was going to do one thing All and right, then move on. Favorite thing. Period. No. Frick you. Okay, yeah, let's do that next week. Let's make next week the Heaven forbid. You know, we're going to do a whole recap. We're going to rank movies. We're going to do all that next week. I was just going to do a quick, like, happy, like, oh, favorite thing, quick, right now. But you had to yell at me. Well, what's your favorite? No, you had to yell at me. Okay, great. We'll do it next week. You then. had to yell at me. Do you have any New Year's resolutions? Not talk to you as much. Because I have some New Year's resolutions for you. Oh, can I make some for you? I'd like Andrew to be more patient. I'd like Andrew to yell at me less. Oh, well, off to a bad start there. I'd like Andrew to watch more movies. <laughs> that one's <laughs> on my list for you. <laughs> Those are my three New Year's resolutions for you. Okay. Okay. Mine for you. Mm-hmm. Watch more movies. Okay. Piss me off less. Okay. By doing things that blow my mind. <laughs> yeah, just just don't surprise me. Oh, that still says Merry Christmas. Shit. <laughs> Give it to me. Um, and um, watch less porn. Well, I don't know if any of that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't, in fact, I, I think didn't it's think going so. to increase. I'm actually going to watch less movies in 2024. And more porn. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Happy New Year or Happy New Year's? Because <laughs> I add S's to everything and I'm not sure. It's, it's Happy, Happy New, New Year. Oh, dude. Are you kidding me? No, dude? I thought I, I say Happy New Year's all the time. Happy New Year's. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's dude. a thing, dude. People say that. There you go. Happy New Year. Put it on the set, oh. lazy bum. Oh, I didn't want to have to get up. Look at that butt, dude. Look at that butt in that red freaking sweatpants. What are you doing to me? You're talking about my buttocks? I'm objectifying you. Oh, that's hot. Do you like being objectified? Always. Thought so. How about you? Depends. Have you what? What's an example of you being objectified? Because I've got a really good one. Like positively or negatively. There was one time where I wore my Spider-Man suit, mm. and it kind of opened my eyes. I became more tolerant and more aware of feminism, because <laughs> you look so confused. Because the one time I wore like a cosplay. And some people said some stuff about it. I was like, oh, is this what, like, girl cosplayers deal with all the time? It didn't really bother me, but it was like, oh, they must get this all the time. The guy was just like, 
yo, like, Spidey is more jacked than you. Like, you need to fill out the suit more in your upper body. Ooh. I was like, he's probably right, but, like, what the frick does that have to do with anything? Ooh. You know? Oh, so people just being mean to you while you're in the suit, and it's yeah. like, oh, women have to deal with this all yeah, the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. But I, number one, it didn't really bother me, and number two, like, most people didn't say anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um... I'm trying to think of a positive one. Uh, I've got a funny one. The other day, uh, uh, me and Rachel were laying down and, you know, you know, when you, well, maybe you don't know, but when you have a significant other, like you, you know, you play fight, you know, and it's not real or anything like that. And, uh, uh, well, with you, it is, it's like borderline. Yeah, maybe. You're, and you're laying out some black eyes every once in a while. Me, This is true. <laughs> uh, and me and Rachel were, uh, you know, giving each other shit the other night. And, um, she goes, you know, I'm only with you because of your body. <laughs> she was like, if you didn't have that sweet bod, I wouldn't be with you. It was a really, fun. really that's, funny moment. That was pretty funny. She's funny, dude. She's got me sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's just really hateful. Yeah, but when she's hateful, she's hilarious. No, 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 I'm with it's you. It's impressive the way she hates on people. No, 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 I'm with you. I actually, you know, a lot of people give us. Especially me. I mean, really, it's a me thing. It's not. I, I, I shouldn't have included you in this. A lot of people give me on the podcast shit because I'm a really negative Nancy. Like, when I hate something, I just don't like it and I don't give any leeway. It's like, wow, what a negative asshole. I get that from my girlfriend, Rachel. Whatever I am, she is ten times at least. Yeah. I mean. And she applies it to people. Yes. A lot more than me. Dude. Oh, I've got so a couple people I really don't like. Rachel has an army. Yeah. Yeah. If this is a good take, th- not a good take. This is like a good thing about Rachel. If as many, if, if every single person in the world hated her with the same level that she hated them, like Rachel would not be able to go outside. Yeah. Because she just hates so many people. If those people hated her back, it'd be a disaster. She's a self-proclaimed hater. She is. She's actually a self-proclaimed misogynist as well, which is really interesting. She has a particular disdain for women. (laughs) Can't blame her. (laughs) I'm kidding. kidding. What the heck? (laughs) All right. So uh, uh, I want to try out a new segment. Is that okay? Yeah. What are you looking at? Nothing. It's a really stupid joke. Say the the the. What are those called? <laughs> the Republic gunship. The gunship looks like it has balls in its mouth, and I was gonna say the Republic gunship is your m- mother, and those are my balls. Show it to the camera. That is very funny. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Barbie. Wow, that was interesting. Um. Wow, that was interesting. So I want to try out a new segment. Yeah, I'm all I'm all ears. I don't know what we're gonna call it, but you know the segment where we did um the hateful the what yeah I, yeah Ashley came up with a good one the hateful on, eight. on Patreon and we do eight of them. No, mm. I think you're to right. hate or not to hate it was oh, it was something like that. Yeah, I like that. That's really good because then we don't always have to do eight. Yeah, that's probably what it should be. So I don't know what we're going to call this. Maybe Ashley will come up with a suggestion for this as well. Or any of the Shout out all the patrons. Or anybody. Yeah, period. Let's start the new year with 5,000 patrons, huh? Unlikely. Probably. Um, uh, this is a, a new segment right now. I just am calling it old, old news. Two olds. Yeah. Because you know there's the, the statement like old news. Well, this is like super old news. Like this is news from months ago. Yeah, so ago. You're, you're emphasizing the old by saying it twice. But it's news that we've never talked about on the podcast that people have asked us to. And we just, our episodes would have been so late that we didn't talk about them. But now that we're like three months late, I feel like it's kind of a cool time. Is to this talk actual about. news? Yeah. These are like actual things that like were in the news f- between five months ago all the way to like two months ago. Like so, late November is like, I think the latest of these, but there are things that people asked us to talk about that we didn't. And like, I just wanted, like Biden, Trump. I, no, 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 no. Like superhero, like nerd Hamas. news. No, no, no. <laughs> I was like, I don't we think we're not I... discussing the Middle East crisis. Oh, right okay, now. I was just making sure. Um, because uh, we had, people have said Israel Palestine. 
Not yeah. going to be talking about that. <laughs> no. No, ma'am. We are a superhero nerd Star Wars podcast. You, we need to watch more movies. You should not get news from us. Like, no. real news that matters. Um. So, here's, here's one. Uh... Hayden Christensen looks like he's going to be coming back to Star Wars. He signed with a new agency recently. Uh, does it surprise me? Does it surprise you? Nothing surprises me anymore. Cool. Sticking with Star Wars, uh, Dave Filoni is now the COO of, of Star Wars. What does that stand for? Period. Chief Operating Officer? Uh-huh. Chief Executive Officer? Uh-huh. CEO? Uh-huh. Are you the COO? Of this podcast? Mm -hmm. Sure. You're definitely the boss. We don't have many employees. And by many, I mean none. none. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really just... You think we'll ever get to the point where we're like, there will be a CEO? Yeah. No. Oh, maybe not like a CEO, but like a full staff. Yeah, I think we'll have a staff. Mm -hmm. You know what we need before staff? Hmm. Money. Correct. Brand Uh, deals. Yes. Someone find us a brand deal. Please. Um... Better help. Like, what the frick? Hello? My mental health sucks. Sponsor us. Oh, nice. Okay. Better help. Okay. Audible. Okay. We're giving, we're shouting out all these brands that aren't paying us. It's a good way for them to continue to not pay us. Well, maybe if we shout them out and then they'll be like, oh. Well, you did that with Blaze Pizza and they did sponsor you. Yeah, but I did it with Trivia Crack and I got a brand deal with them for a year and a half. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Dave Filoni. He's now COO. second in command. I do have something I want to talk about about this. A lot of people are really excited about it. Okay. I'll, I would say the same people that re- are really excited about it are George Lucas is Star Wars is the best. I hate Kathleen Kennedy people. You know the I hate Kathleen Kennedy crowd, right? The smart people? Sure. <laughs> but you agree that that crowd largely is the same crowd that is like George Lucas can do no wrong, right? There's a lot of crossover. A lot of crossover. I do want to say this. I don't think a lot of people know this. Because I saw a lot of people freaking out about this Dave Filoni news a couple months ago, like three months ago when it happened. And everybody was like, Dave Filoni, he's the hero. There we go. That's what we wanted. Get Kathleen Kennedy out of there so that we could finally see like George's vision for Star Wars after he sold it. George Lucas made Kathleen Kennedy the pre- president of Lucasfilm. And Disney was blindsided by it and was upset about it. Right before the selling of Lucasfilm, he made Kathleen Kennedy the president and made it in the contract to keep her as president. You might be right. There's a lot of times you say, say stuff like this with impunity and it turns out to not be true. Or you assume the the uh, the motivations or timelines. I'm not saying you're wrong, but this is this just sounds like something that I would double check. George, why is Kathleen Kennedy in charge of Star Wars? George Lucas wanted his company and his Star Wars and Indiana Jones franchise to be someone he knew and trusted. Kennedy's history with Lucas alongside her working relationship with his friend Steven Spielberg and John Milius made her the perfect candidate to take over and usher in a new era for the company. Perfect's a bad word. I don't think she's done a great job. And I know a lot of people that hate her. I do not hate her. But I know a lot of people that hate her. I'm just saying she's George Lucas Star Wars in the definition of the word another... so. It helps my argument, which is George Lucas is very fallible as a Star Wars boss and made a lot more bad decisions than good. This just helps me with that crowd because they're like, George Lucas can't do no wrong. Kathleen Kennedy sucks. Get her out of here. You think George Lucas would make all the decisions that Kathleen Kennedy has made? You know, a lot of people... Now we're getting political. (laughs) Are we? Yes. Yes. Because a lot of people blame Kathleen Kennedy almost exclusively for the wokeness in Star Wars. I don't even like using that word. I don't want to have this conversation. We don't have to. But 
George Lucas is a very political person. And he's Han shot first. Very <laughs> Yes. He's very outspoken. He's very outspoken about Star Wars straight up just being the Vietnam War and the US is the Empire. He's a very political guy. So a lot of people are like Kathleen Kennedy made Star Wars liberal, like whatever, whatever. And sure, there are more girls in it now than then. But I do think it is reasonable to believe that if George Lucas was still in charge, it, there would be that level of politics. I it. don't think there'd be as many females. And if they were, they'd be in some bikinis. <laughs> but is that like... There's no underwear in Is Star it Wars. a bad thing? That Star Wars has more girls in it than not? Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, okay, a lot, a lot of people hate Ray. She's a Mary Sue, whatever, whatever. I like Ray, whatever, Ray's great. whatever. Ray's great. Yeah, like, whatever. We, we don't have to talk about that. I'm not a fan of Jyn Erso, but that's got nothing to do with Felicity Jones. I think she's great in other things. I just think that character sucks. But, dude, Mon Mothma is, like, a top 10 Star Wars character for me now because of Andor. Right, Ahsoka is an incredible character. Like, there are plenty of females now. There's a lot of females now in Star Wars, women that, like, have roles. And there's a billion different women. There's bad women, like Asajj Ventress. And there's great women like Ahsoka. And there's morally ambiguous women, like, you know, well, when... What? what are you just listing all the females I, right now? I'm or? just saying, like, that wasn't like that pre-Kathleen Kennedy... I, I don't think that that's a bad thing. That's not like I, I that's not something I would complain about. No one's saying you should. A lot of people do. Yeah, yeah, not the majority of people. No. All right. And uh, we'll move on. Ahsoka was pre Kathleen Kennedy. No. So was Padme. So well, was Leia. Padme, one hundred percent. Leia, one hundred percent. Ahsoka. <laughs> Clone Wars. Came out before Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah, but did, didn't did Disney already own Star Wars? And if not, like, the Ahsoka now that we have is not the Ahsoka that George Lucas created. No, but she's still a main character at the beginning of that when show. Did, yeah, but she was annoying. We had to change her. Um, when did... She was mad annoying. Yeah, dude. Season one of Ahsoka is she's, brutal. She's terrible. That movie sucks. The 2008 one that came out in theaters, that movie is awful. Uh, when did George Lucas sell Star Wars? 2012. Okay, so Ahsoka is pre. Okay. So, there you go. He was putting more females in Star Wars pre-Kathleen Kennedy. So, you people... I, I, don't under, I haven't understood your point for the last five minutes. All right, all right. We'll move on then. <laughs> uh, do you want to talk about the questionable ending to the strike or no? I don't really care. What's the questionable ending? Uh, that... God, this is awesome. <laughs> um, uh, that, like, the deal, right, when everybody was excited that the strike was ending, nobody had read it, and then I think, like, 15% of the union uh, voted that they don't want it. I actually think it was more than 15%. I'm just saying a conservative number there. But um, that, like, people now have read it, and the contract is not favorable to the little guy, and it really is only favorable to uh, A-listers. And there are things in it like uh, you could still totally lose out on auditions if you don't submit yourself to be scanned for AI. The AI protections really only protect A-listers, and there's questionable stuff like that. And it's, I feel like if, if it was bad, more people would be upset. Like, I would have heard about it more. I, I saw a lot about it a little bit, ago, like, a couple months ago, but now I'm not seeing anything. I heard a couple of things, but, like, yeah, I, I feel like it went on for so long and so many people were passionate about it that if they didn't get a, get a good deal, it would have been headline news for a long time. Yeah, no, yeah, that's fair. Uh, like, why is, would you hold out for five months? Or how, it was yeah, it was way over 100 days. Than, yeah. yeah, for a deal that people wouldn't like. Totally yeah. fair. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is by far the most interesting bit of news to me. Uh, Zack Snyder said that he would only make one Marvel movie and one DC movie. It was if he was ever to go back to superheroes. He said he'd make a Daredevil and Elektra movie. Interesting. But this is much more interesting to me. He said he would only come back to DC to direct a direct adaptation of uh, The Dark Knight Returns. My favorite comic of all time. No surprise there. That's all he knows how to make. In my opinion. Just 
go away. Yeah, I I don't <laughs> I don't want that. I just do think it's funny because like Batman v Superman. I mean, he is. I mean, Ben Affleck's Batman is the Dark Knight Returns like silhouette. Yeah, the yeah, logo, yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, 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 uh. it's uh, uh that that it's just like funny that people were like. Wow, that would be so interesting. It's like, no, of like, course. Duh, yeah. This guy has read one Batman comic in his life, and then he was just like, I'm going to make Superman. Yeah. Because Superman's, you know, sad in that comic. Uh, and then finally, the last thing I want to talk about, uh, we talked about this a little bit off air, and you had a very surprising opinion of it. Um, I want to talk to you about the Fantastic Four rumors and how it pertains to Superman Legacy. Um I'll get to oh. that in a second. I thought you were talking about something else. The rumored castings for uh, Reed Richards being Pedro Pascal. Yeah. And you seemed happy about this. I didn't. I wasn't necessarily happy. Like, I don't think it's necessarily. I like Pedro Pascal. Mm-hmm. So because Me I too. like him, I'm fine with it. I don't think it's necessarily a perfect Reed Richards casting, but Pedro Pascal is awesome. And you were like, the internet was hating on this. My side of the internet, all I saw was just daddy. Yeah, and people being excited. Yeah, um, yeah. I, 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 uh, I was recently out with friends, and everybody in that group hated it. Um, but my thing with it is, I've got a couple reasons why I really, really don't like um, the Pedro Pascal casting. First of all, like you just said, I don't think that that guy is Reed Richards. I just, what about him? Is like, you know, cocky asshole, genius, socially awkward. Like, that's not Pedro Pascal at all. Um, so I don't like that casting. And it, I think he could do that, though. It feels to me like they are casting a big name to cast a big name. And why I want to bring up Superman Legacy is because none of the Superman Legacy cast are big names. They just look like perfect representations from the character on page to the character on screen. Um, take Jimmy Olsen, for example, who you loved in what show? Santa Clarita Diet. Yeah, like, that looks exactly like Jimmy Olsen. Obviously, David Cornsweet, who is now ripped, looks just like Superman, just like Henry Cavill looked, but it's, here we are casting these relative unknowns, the only person from that cast that I would say is more so known, obviously Rachel Brosnan um, is is a bit more known, and then Nicholas Holt, but these guys aren't A-listers. And that's how the MCU started. They cast a very alcoholic Robert Downey Jr., paid him $500,000 for Iron Man 1. They signed poor Don Cheadle to an 18 billion film deal while he was at his kid's birthday party. You can't do that with Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal is going to have to film Mando Season 7 and then The Last of Us Season 8 and film the next two rom-coms in the same weekend that you're going to need him for Secret Wars. Like, you can't really get that guy for, you know, an eight-picture deal the way that they did earlier on in Chris Evans' career, the way that they did for a younger Chris Pratt. You know, I, I just... And that's, you know, obviously DC is getting a lot of praise, rightfully so right now, but... I mean, it, it really does feel like, God, you are only casting Pedro Pascal because he's a big name. Maybe get an unknown guy that looks the part that you've auditioned, screen tested with your other actors. Get that guy and get him, you know, pay him $20 for eight movies the way that you can with an unknown. He might be great. Uh, look, I don't think it's Pedro Pascal, personally. I don't. I, I didn't think it was Adam Driver. I didn't think it was Martin Robbie. Thing, the, I didn't think it was John Krasinski. Until they're on stage at Comic-Con, I don't think it's any of them. The weird thing was, like, it was a rumor, and then I saw multiple people, a friend of the show, come out and be like, he's officially been cast. Mm-hmm. I was like, what are we doing? Mm-hmm. Well, I, it seemed more official than most of the rumors, but I don't know why people jumped on it as much. It was interesting. But I remember hearing people like saying that Adam Driver has signed his contract. Like, I don't, do I don't remember that? anyone saying anything officially except for Pedro. And I mean, I'm talking about someone who like does movie news and mm-hmm. you know who I'm talking about? Yeah. And it's just not true yet, I don't think. Yeah. So it was Until weird. they walk out of Comic-Con, I won't believe it. I thought you were talking about the Taika Waititi thing. Do you want to talk about that? That's old news. Yeah, but when you said uh, you had a surprising opinion on it. I thought that's what you were talking about. Mm, no. 
But do you want to talk about that? Sure. I think you have an interesting take on it. Well, okay. So the new the piece of news is Taika Waititi. Well, everyone's loving hating him right now. You're yeah. late to the party, yeah. first of all. Yeah. No. Yeah. You were you were early on that. I was. Well, I never hated Taika Waititi. I just like everyone thinks his movies suck, and it's like, literally. I think if Thor Love and Thunder came out before Ragnarok, I think Ragnarok would be Love and Thunder now. That's how similar they seem to me. But Mm -hmm. um, Love and Thunder was just – Ragnarok was just new and hip and different, and everyone bandwagoned on it. Um, But whatever. Um, Yeah, everyone's loving hating on him right now because he's made some bad movies, I guess, and they're like, he made good movies once upon a time. Trust me, I promise. It's like, okay. Um, so I feel a little vindicated, but also at the same time, like, I feel like he's getting too much hate because the movies are fine. Number one, they're not bad. And number two, people are taking a lot of things out of context, but the newest one was Taika Waititi has always had this, this attitude of Mm -hmm. like, I just kind of, I'm like, I'm here Mm -hmm. and I'm doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when he was doing Love and Thunder Press, him and, um, Valkyrie, Tessa Thompson. Yeah. We're doing an interview and he said, they said something like. Or he, he was just like, yeah, I don't even remember doing that. Like, he was just very flippant. Like, that's his attitude. So the newest piece of information is he was in an interview. And, like, basically he said, he's like, yeah, I took the Marvel movie because I wanted to make money. And it's like, and everyone's like, how could he blah, blah, blah. What the? F- yeah, why do you think he took it? Yeah, what? In what world? You think anyone's taking the role of Thor because it's an artistic, <laughs> cinematic masterpiece that they've always wanted to pursue that character Mm -hmm. i mean maybe but like taika watiti came in and he made a movie that everyone loved Mm -hmm. except me right just because and he was like it's a good way to feed my kids yeah he's a terrible person like it doesn't he's flipping about everything and just because he's like being honest everyone's gonna take a marvel movie for the money that doesn't mean he didn't try or like he wasn't excited about it but that being one of your main motivators to take a movie like, do we have to find someone who's been trying to make a Thor movie since they were 12 and is super passionate about only Thor movies mm-hmm. and doesn't care about the money? Mm-hmm. Or are we just not going to pay the director because mm-hmm. that means his motivations are whack? Like, people are just, like, on the bandwagon of hating Taika. And it's just, like, that just seems to me, like, of course he would say that. He's just being honest. Mm-hmm. Other people won't be honest, I guess. I don't know. And I think he misses being, like, this indie darling. I remember when Hunt for the Wilder People came out. I remember, like, everybody was, like, on his balls in that community. And then, obviously, Thor Ragnarok came out. And then, kind of, everybody was on his balls. I think he misses the artsy motherfuckers liking him. And so he said that to appease them. It's very popular to be hating on Marvel now. It didn't bother me very much, but... I saw so many people were like, of course. He's not, like, nice about it, though. It's not like... Yeah, you know, I took the money, everything. He is like, yeah, I didn't ever read Thor comics. I was like, what is this? I had a second kid. I got to feed that kid. I didn't want to be doing it. That is what he said. Um, Yeah, a little meaner than he needed to be, but what are you going to do? It's better than a person like reading comics and trying to be all artistic and then giving us Man of Steel, so. Well, that guy didn't read any comics. He's read The Dark Knight Returns twice. Exactly. I don't think he read Watchmen. (laughs) He made Watchmen. Um, yeah, uh, you want to move on to our, uh, bracket? Sure. Or do you want to talk about things that we're looking forward to for 2024? Let's say, you want to save the bracket? We always save the bracket. Right? We can save the bracket. I thought it'd be a fun change of pace to do it in the middle of the episode. We can. Let's do it. Okay. All right. So this is mid and post credit scene bracket. Oh, mm-hmm. he dropped five patrons, dude. We're going to go homeless. It's crazy. I know. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Let me pull it up. Um, burr, 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 burr. Sokka style made, um, this bracket. Mm-hmm. The professional. Professional. Christmas movies bracket. We did that on the Patreon. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> now, this is a 64 seed bracket, yes. right? Yeah, so there's a lot. All right. So... The Loki in credit scene, the Loki variants. Mm-hmm. This is the end credit scene of episode five of season one of Loki. At the end of episode, oh no, at the end of episode four of season one of Loki, he gets pruned by Ravana. Yeah, and he sees the And other then 
after the credits, he wakes up and he's surrounded by Crocodile Loki, Kid Loki. Um, Doctor Strange, Loki. the Mordo, um, and Pangborn. Oh, I actually like that scene quite a bit, even though it never led to anything. But I got to go Loki here, right? Yeah. If it had led to something, I would have gone the Doctor Strange one. Wow. I disagree with that. I love that Loki scene. Yeah. I just don't care about Loki enough. Civil War, the spider symbol. Yeah. Not a great one. Uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Power Broker. Oh, that's like the worst one ever. So we got to go Civil War, right? Is that where she walks out? Sharon Carter on the phone? Is that- yeah, and she's like, oh, I'm the Power Broker. <laughs> it's so bad. Multiverse of Madness, it's over. Yeah, the worst one ever. Iron Man 2, Thor's Hammer. Thor's Hammer. Thor's Hammer, obviously. Dude, obviously. that was awesome, dude. Quantumania, Cancel of Kings. Amazing. Amazing. No Way Home, Eddie and Symbiote. I will defer to you here. I like the Council of Kings because I was right. Yeah, I like, <laughs> like it. I predicted that and then I was right, but. I like it too. I would definitely go No Way Home if the Eddie, because it was basically showing Eddie Brock looking at Tom, right? No. No, no what, that, what that's the let there be carnage scene. This is the scene of him at the bar. At the bar. Where the dude from Ted Lasso is explaining And him. then he gets put back. And then, but then, it, but leaves. then it leaves the symbiote. Which we don't know if that's actually yeah, going to be but in it. It's so annoying that the let there be carnage one like, made led you to think. Nothing. Made it you, led to nothing. Like yeah. He was literally like, licking the screen like, oh, I'm about to fight this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It leads to nothing. And then it, yeah. So I'm going to go cancel. Okay. Love and Thunder, Hercules. Okay. Okay, yeah. Captain America, the Winter Soldier, the twins. Twins. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Iron Man 3, Tony venting to Bruce. I, I'm not this kind of doctor. Yeah. Multiverse of Madness, Clea. Is that where she shows up and he's got the thing in his forehead? Yeah, where she's like, you started another incursion. And he's like, let's go. In the uh, Yeah, no, obviously Iron Man 3. Yeah. Captain Marvel... Uh, Carol at Avengers HQ. Yes, in Endgame, it like leads to Endgame where they're like, uh, 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 and then like they're like, oh well, this person's dead, this person's dead, and then Carol shows up and she's like, where's Fury? Black Widow, Yelena, and Yelena and Valentia. Valentina. Valentina, sorry. That scene is so good. I like that one better. Really? But the Endgame one is so good. Yeah, but the the. The Infinity War post credit scene with Captain Marvel is better. Is better. So you don't... Oh, f- it, dude. I'm fine with either. You're taking the... I'll do it either. Where she's at the... You're taking the... Because she whistles at her tombstone and then she's like, this guy killed her. And it's Hawkeye. Okay. I'll give it to you. Eternals, Black Knight, and Blade. Ooh. <laughs> WandaVision, Monica, and Ralph Boner. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Moon Knight... Jake Lockley, Iron Man, Nick Fury. Say it again. Moon Knight. Yeah. Iron Man. Iron Man and Nick Fury? Yeah. In Iron Man 1? Yeah. yeah. Easy. That's a favorite. That's a favorite. Shang-Chi, um, his sister takes over the Ten Rings? Is it yes. His yeah, yeah. It's not, a great, it's not the Zoo? better scene. What's her name? The, those two, I forget her name. It's XU. I yeah. don't want to yeah, yeah. mispronounce it. And then Miss Marvel, uh, scene from the Marvels. Oh, I didn't finish Miss Marvel's. It, the after credit scene is her being launched into the door, and then it's Brie Larson, and she like sees the room. Oh, you remember that scene? That's in really cool. The Marvels. It's that scene is the end that's credits cool. of Miss Marvel. So I'm going that. Okay. I love Shang Chi though. Yeah, but that after credit scene is the worst after credit scene of the two because the other one is Captain Marvel and Bruce Banner at, like looking at the Ten Rings. Yeah. That scene's way better. Thor, Selvig, and the Tesseract. Yeah. yeah. This is one of my favorites. Yeah. Far From Home Identity Revealed. Oh, gosh. Far From Home Identity Revealed has to be has to be a favorite. I like the Selvig scene because yeah. Loki's like, do the test. Uh, and that's how we know that he's, he's alive. Like, that could be interesting. Yeah. yeah it's whatever. interesting. But no, the Far From Home scene is 
literally one of the best moments in any any do Spider-Man we, do movie. Do we ever. get J. Jonah Jameson's yes! voice in that? Yeah, because it it brings him back. Both of those would be favorites for me. It sucks that they're in the first round together. She Hulk, Wong, Freeze, and Mil Blonsky. Okay. The Marvels, Binary, and Beast. The Marvels. Yeah, yeah, the Marvels. Yep. Yeah. What the heck? Ant Man and the Wasp stuck in the quantum realm. Oh my god! Amazing. That's amazing. Scene. That's a favorite. one of the best ever. She Hulk twerking with Megan. Right. Yeah, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Captain America, the First Avenger, assignment. Nick Fury walks in while he's doing the punching bag. Yeah, I think is what that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Thor: The Dark World, Collector, and the Ether, both really good. Which I'll defer to you. I'm going. You're the Phase One guy, Captain America. You're going Avengers One, yeah. Hawkeye Rogers the musical. That's like in credit scene. Yeah. Oh, they show it's the, the whole, whole clip. musical. Yeah. yeah, Quantumania Loki season two. Oh, where they see? Oh, you are. You I know. gotta go Loki yeah, season two. two. I'm telling you that after credit scene, like yeah. I started <laughs> my pants. It's such a shame season two is fine. Guardians three, come and get your love. Okay. Is that what is that? Guardians three. Three, come and get your love. Yeah, that's um, that's their. The new Guardians. Really? That it's was a big an credit group. scene? Yeah, yeah. Because he's like, I'm going to play a song. It's nostalgic for me. And they play Come and Get Your Love. That's really good. Yeah. Ant-Man scene from Civil War. Guardians 3. What scene from Civil War? Does it show him like <gasps> in the, no, in the no, van? No, 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 no. We have to do this one. Because it's, it's, no, this was amazing. I remember seeing this. and It's Bucky in the thing after oh. they caught him. And he's like. You Your paper. mom's name is Sarah, and he's like, "We could trust this guy." You and he's like, sheet. "We need to put together a team." And 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 Falcon goes, "I know a guy." That that scene is so good. All right. I love the Guardians three scene, but that scene is so good. Ragnarok, Grandmaster. Mm. No, Probably because because he's like, "Oh, revolution! You can't have a revolution without somebody to overthrow." Yay us. It's the worst dialogue for Jeff Goldblum in that whole movie. And I love him. He's my favorite part of that movie. But he's not That's great. That's what it's like the whole movie for He's me. not great in the love whole movie. Love and Thunder that Valhalla. <laughs> that scene also sucks. I'm going to do Valhalla. All right. The Avengers Shwarma. Yeah. Classic. Yeah. She-Hulk helping her dad. Don't care. Shwarma. Yeah, I don't even remember her helping Ant-Man her. the Wasp Suit. That was pretty sick. Yeah. yeah that was pretty yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah. Guardians 1, Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck. No question for me. I would go Ant-Man. No, no question, Howard the Duck. Uh, the Winter Soldier. Why are you letting that thing lick you? Gross. The Bucky Museum. What, what? is it? Bucky Museum? Oh. Is that from Falcon Winter Soldier? No, it's Captain America the Winter Soldier. Oh, it's Bucky at the museum. Oh. Yeah, and then okay. what is the other one? Infinity War, Page and Captain Marvel. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Far from home far from home scrolls. Yeah, not great. WandaVision White Vision. Ugh. I guess scrolls. Yeah. Guardians one baby group dancing. Yeah. And She Hulk is a- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, obviously. Guardians one. Civil War, Bucky and Steve in Wakanda. Yeah, it's fine. Homecoming Scorpion and Vulture. Were they in prison? Yeah, and he's like, I heard you know who Spider-Man is. And he's like, if I knew him, I would have killed him. Civil War? Yeah. But I don't like that that Wakanda in Civil War is so different from the actual Wakanda we get. Um, but Black Panther, Bucky, and Shuri? Mm-hmm. White Wolf. Yeah. Uh, Wakanda forever, T'Challa's son. Well, you're going to go Bucky and Shuri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No question. Uh, what if Hydra Stomper? Yeah, it's not great. Ragnarok Sanctuary Two arrives. Big, big Thanos ship. Yeah, that. Guardians Two Adam Warlock. That was a good one. I remember that. That is a good one. Uh oh, but it's Eros and Pip the Troll for Eternals. Eros and Pip the Troll. That's a shame because I really like that Adam Warlock scene. Yeah, me too. Black Panther United Nations. Yeah. Where, is she giving a speech or is he? He is. And then yeah. she's like, with all due respect, like, how, what's a third world country going to help us out with? Uh, homecoming, Cap and Patience. Oh, that one's really good. 
where at the, the very oh, dude i hate that one i, I was love so that one mad. it was so clever let's talk about patience oh, all right <laughs> that was brutal it was awesome all right you're going united nations no you could go cap we could go cap like with the cap. i thought it was clever i just oh i was like because it was playing on themselves Fuck, dude i was like no the avengers thanos reveal okay and it's another she hulk one okay yeah. i'm not even reading it yeah. one of it one of vision dark hold pretty good yeah age of ultron thanos and gauntlet that's where he's like fine i'll do it myself and he grabs the gauntlet even though it technically doesn't make any sense i want to go the wandavision one fine i'll do it myself yeah that's that's way worse than to fight them is to court death and then him going that is so much better than fine i'll do it myself he didn't send ultron that doesn't make sense. He didn't have the gauntlet yet at that time. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, but it's still epic. No, dude. I'm, Him putting on the Infinity Gauntlet? Like, fine, I'll do it myself became like a... Like, in our vocabulary for years. Oh, uh, fine. Only because Multiverse of Madness sucks. Captain Marvel, Goose, and the Tesseract? He ate the Tesseract, right? Yeah, and he throws he... it up. In Cap- in one of the after- Captain Marvel after credits scenes, he throws up the Tesseract. Doctor Strange scene from Ragnarok. Love that scene. Got it. That's the one with the beer? Yeah, that's the Doctor Strange after credit scene, and he does the beer scene that's in Ragnarok. Guardians 2, Stan Lee and the Watchers. I like that one. Yeah. Incredible Hulk, Tony and Ross. Up to you. I'll go. T- I think I want to go Tony and Ross. Good. Shang Chi, Carol Bruce Wong. You were talking about it earlier. Yeah, like WandaVision, one. Intergalactic Mission. Yep. Uh, obviously, Shang Chi. All right. Back up to the top. Here we go. Intergalactic Mission is the Tiana Paris with the scroll. Monica Rambeau with the scroll. I know. Right. I just. I still don't know what it is. Um, Loki variants and Loki. Yeah. Civil War spider symbol. Loki variants. Iron Man 2, Thor's Hammer, Quantumania, Council of Kangs. We can go Thor's Hammer. Sure. Captain America, the twins. Winter Soldier, the twins at the end. Iron Man 3, Tony venting to Bruce. The twins. Wait. The twins and Tony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The twins, the twins, the twins. The, the Hydra shield. Two, Two sides, sides of a coin, coin that, that is, is no, no longer, longer currency. currency. Oh, dude, it's so good. Yelena and Valencia. Valencia? Yeah, Valentina. Thank Jesus you. Christ. Gosh okay. dang. That's the second time. <laughs> it like reading it from back here, it looks just like Valentine. Um Black Knight and Blade. Black Knight and Blade. Iron Man Nick Fury. Are you sure about that, Mr. Whitman? Oh, I'm getting chills. Nick Fury and Iron Man? Yeah. Miss Marvel's Miss Marvel scene. Yeah, yeah. I, Nick Fury, Iron Man. Far From Home, Identity Revealed, mm-hmm. The Marvel's Binary and Beast. Wow, these are both really good. Identity, Identity Revealed. Revealed. Yep. Because I'm telling you, that scene bringing back J.K. Simmons, like, it raises yeah. it by 10. Yeah, for sure. Ant-Man and the Wasp uh, stuck in the quantum realm. Uh, Wait, Ant-Man and the Wasp stuck in the quantum realm. Amazing scene. And okay. then the assignment for Captain America. I, I Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Uh, Quantumania, Loki Season 2. Yeah. Uh, Ant-Man scene from Civil War. I want to go Loki sure. season two. You. Thank you. Love and Thunder Valhalla, the Avengers Shwarma. Avengers Shwarma. Guardians 1, Howard the Duck, Infinity War, Page and Captain Marvel. <gasps> you want to go Page and Captain Marvel? Okay. All right. All right. Not, All not right. close. I'll give it to you. I'll give it Far to From you. Home Scrolls, Baby Groot Dancing. Far From Home Scrolls, Baby Groot Dancing. Yeah. Baby Groot Dancing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bucky and Steven Wakanda after Civil War, Black Panther, Bucky and Shuri. I think Bucky and Shuri. Yes. Mm hmm. Ragnarok, Sanctuary 2 arrives, Eternals, Eros, and Pitch. Eternals. Homecoming, Cap and Patience, Avengers, Thanos Reveal. Thanos Reveal? Yeah. Age of Ultron, Thanos and Gauntlet, Doctor Strange, scene from Ragnarok. Thanos and Gauntlet. Yeah, that's fine. Incredible Hulk, Tony and Ross, Shang-Chi, Carol Bruce Wong. I'll go Incredible Hulk. Good. Thank you. All right. Loki variants, Thor's Hammer. Okay. You can have it. You sure? Yeah, Thor's hammer. Yeah, that's fine. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> it's, it's the camera. <laughs> Captain America, the twins. Yeah. Uh, Black Knight and Blade. 
Are you it's, sure about that, Mr. Whitman? It's close for me, but I will defer. Do whatever you want. If you give me this eternal scene, does that mean that you won't give me the next eternal scene? I know how much you like the second one, though. The the This one I like, but I like the Harry Styles one more. The twins was just so good. And then it actually led to something because that scene is specifically in Age of Ultron. Like, Blade might suck. You're right. You're right. You're right. But I don't like Loki season two. The Loki teaser in Quantumania is still amazing. What do you want? I'll do whatever you want. I don't like that he calls them miracles because they didn't have the rights for mutants yet. Oh my goodness. I always thought that was dumb. You want Blade? Yeah. All right. Nick Fury and Iron Man, Far From Home, Identity Revealed. This should be the finals. That should be the finals. That should be the finals, dude. (laughs) I know where I'm leaning. I think we are leaning in different places. No, it's fine. It's fine. I think I think Nick Fury deserved better here. Like that was literally that should be the finals. But I Iron to... Man, Nick Fury. That is the first MCU movie. They introduce Nick Fury. You're already getting set up for the Avengers. Basically, like that leads to the rest of the Infinity Saga. Like that is peak right there as an end credit scene. And it was the first one ever. This is Iron Man. This started the end credit thing. No one had done that before. Well, there is an end credit scene in Cars, but yes. But like, come on. Yeah. But you want to go far from home? I do. That really did, like, in terms of reactions from people, like, no one in Iron Man was like, oh my gosh. And that, I, everyone in the theater was like, what? Like, and it What's led- the other Far From Home after credits? Oh, it's the Scrolls one. And, come on. It led to No Way Home, you know. And it starts with that. I'm telling you, bringing back J.K. Simmons, it's like so big for me. And it started the whole, the, and it's like, the villains are coming back? Are Andrew and Toby coming back? Yeah, yeah like, like, oh, I just... Quantumania, Loki Season 2, Ant-Man and the Wasp stuck in the quantum realm. Uh, stuck in the quantum realm. Absolutely. Yeah. That was so, like, we were like, whoa, and you just see them, like, dissipating. Yo, I got chills. I got chills. Avengers Swarma, Page and Captain Marvel. Avengers Swarma, Page and Captain Marvel. Uh, I'll defer to you. These are your movies. Page and Captain Marvel is more serious and like has act- like is actually interesting and mm-hmm. like but it's the shawarma shwar- seems hilarious. It's shawarma. All man. right, go, I'll go with shawarma. I don't care. It's the Avengers. Guardians, Baby Groot dancing, Bucky and Shuri. Baby, Baby Groot, Groot dancing. It's crazy that Bucky and Shuri made it this far. True, they went up against some stinkers. I think. Yeah. Um, Eros and Pip the Troll, Avengers Thanos reveal. Homie, I'm sorry. Please, please, homie, homie, I'm please, sorry. I'm please, sorry. I'm sorry. Please, I'm sorry. it's one of the best castings no. ever. Yeah, but who cares? I do. Thanos reveal. Infinity. It's after one of the best. But it's not the same actor. It's not Josh Brolin. It doesn't matter. It's pink. It's it's got the it's got the reference to the comics. Yeah, but you, the you reference see- to the comics that never plays out. It doesn't matter. Like he says to court death because no, he courts there's death no in the shot. Comics, I'm giving you air. Er- death is a, di- a character. In the Revealing MCU. the main villain for the next 20 movies, which is the best like saga of all time, leading to Infinity War and Endgame. Revealing that villain in a great and clever way at the end of one of the best Marvel movies ever, opposed to casting a character I don't care about. But I care about it. A lot of people care about Star Fox. A lot of more people care about the Infinity Saga. I'm not. I, I'm. I. I let it get this far. Come on. It's. I like. I'm not. I'm not exaggerating when I say that it's one of the best castings of all time. I, that's great. That's great. And I'm like not a Harry Styles stand here. Like I'm not. You know. I will praise it all day long with you. I'm not going to praise it more than the Thanos reveal. I can't believe you. I knew you weren't going to let me have that scene either. I would have bargained. Are you sure about that, Mr. Whitman, to make sure that the the Eros one made it farther? That is the Avengers Thanos. Like, that's that's top of the list here. Come on. Thanos and the Gauntlet in Age of Ultron, Incredible Hulk, Tony and Ross. 
Incredible Hulk, Tony and Ross. Yes. Is what you're saying? Yes. All right, cool. Iron Man 2, Thor's Hammer, Eternals, Blade. Thor's Hammer or Blade? Thor's Hammer. Far From Home, Identity Reveal, Stuck in the Quantumania. Wow, those <gasps> are both so good. Yeah, <laughs> Why does the Far From Home reveal go against all the best ones? Oh my like, gosh. the Quantumania one would have beaten Thor's hammer or blade. Yeah. What the heck, man? Yeah. Far From Home. Okay. Because I would argue the Nick Fury one is better than the Quantumania one. Sure. Yeah, that's close. I see what you're saying. So because Far From Home beat Nick Fury... Then it has to beat the Quantum Mania one. Shawarma, Baby Groot dancing. Baby Groot. Correct. Yeah, great. Thanos reveal, Tony and Ross. Thanos reveal. God, dude, Harry Styles would have made it again. Thor's <laughs> hammer, identity reveal. Identity reveal. Thor's hammer's had a really good run here. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I it it would have gotten out if it I was... kind of forgot. Doesn't Colson have a line like, we can't move it? Like, he, nobody can lift it or something. I think there's a line in there that's, like, really good like that. Oh, it has Colson in it, too. Yes. No. So, we found it. Oh, it's just so good. Because you don't see what it is. In the oh, yeah. Oh, it's got a little thunder in there. Oh, yeah, dude. That's an electric scene. Literally. So, we did Identity Reveal, and now we have Baby Groot Dancing and Thanos Reveal. Baby Groot dancing in the Thanos reveal. I want to go Baby Groot dancing here. Okay. Baby Groot dancing is like probably my favorite after credit scene. So in the finals of the post credit bracket, we have Far From Home Identity revealed and Guardians won Baby Groot dancing. And you're going to go. We're both going. We, we're on the same page here. I believe so. Three, two, one. Identity revealed. That's crazy. That's, you know. You know what? I didn't think that all of these were MCU going into this. I didn't realize that. I thought we were going to get like some bad DCEU ones and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, those, like the variety that we got, so many of those were phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. Our finals and semifinals and everything, it like looked so different. Like our finals, phase two, phase four. Our semifinals, we had a couple from phase one. There were plenty from phase three. That's amazing. Consistently. I mean, amazing. Amazing. Really nice work there. Do you want to look forward to 2024? Yeah, let's end it off with that. Actually, I need to look this back. I've got some ready for you right here. So, obviously, movies that pertain to us. Uh, J Joker is getting a sequel. Oh, yeah. I don't think it should. I don't think it's gonna be good it's also a musical yeah what the frick is that can joaquin phoenix sing i don't know obviously uh also the first the first one is so so gritty and real or like real and like and now they're just gonna be like are they singing dramatically like is it is it gonna be like a high school musical type beat where they're all just like in class and then they just start all tap dancing like I, I don't know it seems like a weird choice speaking of billion dollar movies that shouldn't have a sequel uh mufasa the lion king i actually am excited about that it's live action yeah That's did you like the live action lion king i thought it was fine like i don't understand why anyone would hate it or love it it is literally a shot for shot remake of the but they don't emote it's a it's a real lion. I, I know. I'm so sick of people having a problem with that. It's a lion. They do emote enough. Dude, like, you're on John Favreau's balls. Yeah, sure. I don't care. I love him, but he. It's literally like a shot for shot remake in most of the scenes. It was just interesting to see. I don't think why I don't think anyone should love it or hate it. But now that they're doing something new. Mufasa is a great character. Seeing a lion live action, seeing like an origin story or something with him that's new and not just a shot for shot remake might actually be interesting. All right. Uh, got uh, Furiosa, which is a sequel to Mad Max Fury Road, which is one of the best movies I've ever seen. Uh, Charlize Theron is coming back. Uh, we're getting Anya Taylor-Joy in that one. I'm excited now. Uh, 
I'm excited, but with, you know, it's kind of one of those where it's like, if it's good, it'll probably be great and we'll enjoy it. But if not, I'm not going to be butthurt about it. Obviously, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I am very cautiously excited for it. Yeah, I think if we go in with low expectations, we'll have fun. But, um, yeah, I don't think anyone's expecting it to be the originals. Originals, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm I'm with you there. Obviously, uh, Madam Web, mm-hmm. the movie with a $200 million budget that looks like it has an $18 budget. It's so stupid. I just... Say that. There's one scene where it looks weird. Oh, you didn't think the whole trailer? No, just looked... the, the very first scene in the diner, I was like, this kind of looks fan-made. And then the rest, I was like, okay. I was just shocked at the amount of exposition in that trailer. Like, what's the... So what? I don't understand these weird things people get upset about. You didn't think the line... Oh, no, the, he was there with my, my mother mom, while she was when studying, she was studying spiders, and then she died. <laughs> Come on. Oh, I can see things in the future. Oh, so can you. Can he see things in the future? Probably. It seems that we're all connected. That's how much... It's not is how the, it happens. In the trailer. Like, can you so imagine what? how much is in the movie? I was singing this movie's praises for the cast... Like literally this they time last year. They explain what's gonna happen in the movie. That's what a trailer should do. Like I don't. So you're yes. you're excited for Madam Web. I don't think it's gonna be great. The trailer didn't look great. I'm just yeah. not like dogging it because they explain the premise of the movie with lines. All right, all right. Like yeah, the the scene where she was like in studying spiders. Like yeah, it was a little on the nose and like could have been <laughs> written better. But like to say the whole trailer's terrible. All right. No, get over it. Inside Out too. Yeah, not a movie that I necessarily think needs a tra- uh, a second one, but no. we'll see. It is in Riley's head. We got that confirmed, which is yeah. interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, obviously, both of our most anticipated movie of the year, the only MCU movie we will be getting, Deadpool 2. Deadpool 3, excuse me. Uh, you're, that's bold to say that you have that over Beyond the Spider-Verse. Is Beyond the Spider-Verse coming out next year? We don't know. I don't I, think so. Yeah, it might. I, if Beyond the Spider Verse is coming out next year, that is my most right. But after movie that, Deadpool, yeah. but after that, Deadpool three, no question. Yeah, Hugh Jackman is returning. The suit is glorious. I really like the new Deadpool suit. Mm-hmm. The bright, vibrant red. I just think it the looks eyes. really sharp. Yeah, no, it looks good. I, like, I'm and I'm really glad. You know, I don't respect him as much as everybody else, but I'm so excited to see Ryan Reynolds back as this character. Yeah, no, I me think too. he's. Really good. Yeah, of course. And, you know, we'll see how much, you know, how many, you know, Tobey Maguire's they throw into that movie. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, We are getting Venom 3. Yeah, I'm excited. We'll see. Go have fun with it. We are getting Sonic 3. No, not excited. A movie that you won't have fun with for whatever reason. Because it's... (laughs) <laughs> because the second one is so bad. No, the second one's great. I actually like the second one better it, than it, the first one. It was it was one of those moments, kind of like a Ragnarok thing for me, where like I come out of it and I see everyone hyping this movie up, and I'm like, wait a minute, what? I'm so disconnected. Sonic Two was a- a- actively bad. No, and it's so funny. It's not funny. No, come on, the the black lady on the golf cart running over actively her not funny that was one of my examples of not funny Hysterical. the whole scene where they like do like a tap dance in a barn somewhere super fun not fun super fun just so, like and they're bringing they're they're bringing in shadow probably my favorite character from that like, universe sonic I got 2 shadow wasn't, right here i would give sonic 2 like a like a 5 or 6 i'd give it a 7 so we're not that far here's one that i know that we're both Pumped for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2. Yeah, baby! Yeah, baby! Yeah, baby. Inject it into my veins. Oh, give me all that Tom Cruise, daddy. Oh, oh he's just so good. He's the best actor in the, the world. Goat. Yeah, do we have anything interesting no, the, to the, say? The part other one was awesome. It was awesome. It was perfect. It was exactly what it needed to be. Give it, me give me in that off. Wreck Haley that up with Atwell, the bring her back. Oh, Everybody. Awesome. Dude, I've never been like a big old Haley. Mommy type person. Yeah. I. In that movie, yeah. In that movie, I, my, every time she was on screen, I was like, are you serious right now? Yeah. My jaw dropped. Yeah. Love her. No, I'm with you. She's gorgeous. Here's one, a franchise that. Pickpocket me all day long. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. No. Okay. We're done. (laughs) 
Are you at all excited for uh, Elio? What now? It's Disney Pixar's Elio. Oh, not really. Yeah, me neither. I just haven't seen anything. Yeah. That like makes me go, oh yeah. We'll see. Here's one that we haven't seen any sort of trailer for or anything, but it's a franchise that you and I hold dear. Kung Fu Panda 4? Yeah. Trepidatious. Why? Because the third one sucks balls. Yeah. Wow. You think the third one sucks balls? Yeah. Wow. I I was like, the first two. Kung Fu Panda 2 is my second favorite animated movie of all time, potentially. Second two? In Person of Groove. You think Kung Fu Panda 2 is better than Incredibles? Maybe. You think Kung Fu Panda 2 is better than both Spider-Verse movies? Yeah, so better, no. But you like it more. Those are all, all toss-ups. Like, I, Spider-Verse just is, like, in a whole other realm to me. Like, it's just, it's it's hard to compare. Yeah. But Kung Fu Panda 2, like, growing up especially, like... It's it, a great movie. It is unbelievable. It's in my top ten. I'm not trying to knock you. It's unbelievable. And Kung Fu Panda 1 is incredible. incredible. And the fact that I like the second one more, like the cinematography in the second one, like the, the way they do like the water drop and the meaning behind it and the little goat that's talking to him and his past that he's dealing with and the and the symbolism and the, the I laughed out loud so hard when I first watched that movie. I think even though it's a very dramatic moment, Gary Oldman goes, I scarred you. And he goes, scars heal. And he goes, wounds heal. <laughs> Wounds I here. think that's hilarious. It's so funny. Like, yeah. It's a very serious moment, too, but that's like really funny. <laughs> yeah, their interaction. Scars heal. Wounds heal, you fucking idiot. I like, want to watch it again. I want to watch it again. And we just watched How to Train Your Dragon on Patreon movie night in November. And like, like that's a great movie for us to like. I think you and I both unanimously like Kung Fu Panda 1 and 2 better. Then How to Train Your Dragon. I think Kung Fu Panda 1 and How to Train Your Dragon might be tied. But... I like Kung Fu Panda 1 better. Because I like Kung Fu Panda 1 better than you because I... Which one I like more changes. Yeah, okay. Like, I think Kung Fu Panda... But Kung Fu Panda 3 is clearly the worst. I haven't seen it because I've heard so many bad things about it. Okay, well, you need to watch it. But I, like... I need to watch it again. J.K. Simmons is the villain. Yeah. And it's still bad? Like... I just never felt into it the whole movie. Like I wasn't laughing as much. I wasn't. I didn't care as much. Like all their villains are good. They do well with all three villains. And mm -hmm. Kai is interesting. He's a little bit different, or whatever his name is. And um, I don't like the fact. Do you know this? That he beats somebody. Yeah, Ugwe. Yeah. What the frick is that about? Yeah. And like, you know, it's whatever. Yeah, because Kung Fu Panda three wasn't great. I am not excited for four. But we'll see. I'm definitely going to go see it. It might blow me away. I think Jack Black is awesome. Yeah, he's a man. Uh, you know about... So, obviously, we're getting Godzilla x Kong. Yeah. I I just want to say, Godzilla fans, congratulations. I'm so happy. You guys are killing it. You got the Apple TV Plus show. You got Godzilla, Godzilla minus, minus one. one. Godzilla x Kong: The New Empire comes out this coming year. Like, you're getting everything, dude. Yeah, I'm like, so I'm happy for them. Godzilla is on my list of daddies. No, he is. He's a known daddy of yours. Yeah. You know about Beetlejuice 2 with Johnny Depp and Jenna Ortega? What the frick? I'm happy for Johnny Depp, obviously. Good. Um, yeah, whatever. But, yeah, it's a... What a weird thing to do a second. Yeah. Like, it's not even a reboot or like a spinoff. It's just Beetlejuice 2 after, what, 30 years? But Michael Keaton isn't Beetlejuice? Yeah, like Johnny Depp and Jenna Ortega, that's a good cast for that for movie. For that movie, but like, it's just weird. And in the same vein of weird sequels years and years and years later from a classic, uh, Gladiator 2. Yeah, what? I don't like this. I don't like it. What's the point? Do like, a spinoff or reboot it if you're going to do that. Don't just do a second. Yeah, I... Uh, uh, okay. We're, but we're, I, I think Hollywood is at least getting past the, the, the reboot craze that happened the last five years yeah but this movie bit, but... tells me that that's not the case well yeah i just don't think there's as many Are you excited for fall guy with ryan gosling yeah and blood yeah, yeah. because you love bullet train i don't love bullet train i think bullet train was fine but the trailers are great yeah. i think it's really great and i love both of them yeah yeah i, I love it you know i i i think bullet train is the perfect movie to watch on a plane 
Yeah. I look forward to seeing Fall Guy on a plane. No, I'm excited to see that one. Um, Big screen, baby. And uh, uh, speaking of, because we talked about him earlier, uh, Rebel Moon. Yeah. Zack Snyder's Star Wars, rated R Star Wars. It's Star Wars, but the lightsabers are even edgier. You care? I won't. Not until I see a trailer. We've got a bunch of horror movies coming out. Okay. A lot of sequels. Like A Quiet Place, Day One. Absolutely. Give it to me. I don't like the fact that there are Quiet Place movies without John Krasinski. I know it doesn't. It makes sense because, you know. You know. He's not with us anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, Spoiler alert for a movie that came out in, in 2014. What was it? Something like that. A long time ago. Yeah. But I, I liked both. I will go so far as to say I love both. Good. I Good. think they're both 8 out of 10. I think they're both great. The first one is one of the only movies to verbally get a gasp out of me from something that happened on screen. In the first scene? Yep. The opening scene? Yep. It's like shocking. Like people in the theater looked at me because I was like, <gasps> like I could not, like it was crazy the way it was shot. It was so good. What a way to start that movie. What a clever idea. Whole horror movie where like you can't make a noise. Yeah. Brilliant idea. It's the reason the why suspect. high concept horror gets made now. Yeah. Um, We've got Night Swim, which is a bit of a high concept horror. You've been seeing the trailers for that. Yeah. And that could really suck. It could really suck, but it could also be very good. It's Blumhouse, right? We are yes, we are getting Nosferatu. Um, no, that's no it's a remake. You know the guy in SpongeBob? Nope. It's flickering with the lights. I don't watch SpongeBob. I don't either, but I know that. It's a very famous image. Like he's a. It's a very famous old movie. It's from 1922. This mother. Okay. So we're getting a remake of this movie. But it's uh, 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 Robert Eggers, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Robert Eggers. Uh, he did The Witch, and he did The Northman, which came out two years ago that you may have liked. And it's uh, Bill Skarsgård. Okay, cool. Um, and uh, so that's that's a big one. And then um, uh, we've got Winnie the Pooh 2, Blood and Honey. There's no way they're making another one of those. Or Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, excuse me. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. We're getting Terrifier 3, right? We are. I was just about to bring that up. We're also getting a tr- Stranger sequel. We're getting a bunch of stuff. But yeah, Terrifier 3, are you going to watch it? I don't know. Did you see Terrifier 2? I only saw the first one and I, I regret it. I also I, saw the first one and I also regret it. The The second one is supposed to be way better. But I mean, the first one is like, it doesn't, it's like not even really a movie. Like it's so bad. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it's literally just an excuse to literally saw a girl in half. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I like if the other ones are like more clever, like Saw's clever at least, you know? Terrifier 3 is a Christmas movie. Oh, great. Yeah. No, thanks. <laughs> um, uh, what's a face? Uh, uh. Uh, our, we've also got Bob Marley, One Love. Uh, Kingsley, Ben Adir will continue to take over the world after playing the lead villain in, in Secret Invasion. Yeah. He's a Ken in Barbie, and now he's Bob Marley. I feel happy for him because I think he's good. He is good. I am not interested in that movie necessarily, but I'll probably go see it. Me neither. Uh, I don't know if I'll see it. I'm not a big fan of biopics. Okay. I haven't seen a lot of the more popular ones. Have you seen Bohemian Rhapsody? Yes. That's, that's good. One of that's probably the second most popular one. Despicable Me Four. Yes. I. What do you think about the first three? I love the first one. Of course. I would go so far as to say I adore it, even though it is not of the level of all the animated movies we just talked about. Okay. Like How to Train Your Dragon or. Kung Fu Panda 1 or 2 or Spider-Verse or any of those. But it's probably my favorite animated movie that's not one of those. I think the second one is significantly worse. Correct. And I haven't seen the third one because of it. I think the third one goes up a little bit. Really? I think it goes peak to bad to... That was fun. I laughed at it a little bit. It's not as good as the first one, but it wasn't actively bad. The first one is just so intelligent. So Every fun. joke is so smart. And that was the introduction of the Minions. I know. And Vector is so good. 
I'm like, okay, you ready? I've got a very hot take for you. Vector is Jason Siegel's best role. I mean, he's great. And I love him in Freaks and Geeks. And I've heard he's great on How I Met Your Mother. And I'm sure he's great in plenty of things. He's in that sex tape movie with Cameron Diaz. He is... Speaking of sex tapes. Oh. That movie with uh, the, the tennis players banging freaking Zendaya. Zendaya's are made of these. Yeah, that's next year. There's also another Alien movie next year, I think. A Borderlands movie. Uh, but another big one that you didn't mention. I don't know why you wouldn't mention this. Dune. Exactly. I know oh, they're why. also doing Ghostbusters again. I know why I didn't mention it. Yeah, Ghostbusters. We've started to see the trailers. The first one with, uh, what's his face? Paul Rudd. Is good. I don't love it. Uh, it's not great. But I Paul Rudd carries so hard for me. Yes. Um, but the thing with this new one is it's very high concept. The whole city of New York is frozen. That is a concept. We'll see. Uh, we, that's a concept. I am excited for Dune. The first Dune is great. Oh. But yeah, Deadpool is at the top of that list. I guess Beyond is not coming out next year anymore. I, I hope it doesn't. So. Like, take your time. I don't care. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, anything? There's a Lord of the Rings movie? What the? F- okay, maybe I'm wrong about the whole reboot thing. <laughs> yeah, there's too much. Yeah, TBD. Under the TBD on this article is Beyond the Spider-Verse. Yeah. All right. I'm excited, though. Do you think 2024 will be as good as 2023 in terms of movies? That's for us to decide next week. 